Hey, I wanted to tell you today how I made out using my ND filter that I got from Lens Create a couple months ago. So it came in, uh, it came in this nice case, um, little lens cloth with it. I, you can get all different sizes to fit whatever your ring is on your on your lenses. And uh, but mainly focus it around the lens that you think you're going to use in that application. So I did no research before going out. I had no idea how I was actually supposed to use this. Um, so I like to figure things out on my own. And uh, sometimes it means the hard way and the long way, but whatever, it's kind of fun. It's like troubleshooting, right? So there's probably other ways to, to use it that are more effective or easier. And I'm happy you share it with me in the comments if, uh, if you happen to know some secrets, um, because I honestly can't be bothered with doing the research <laughs> and finding another way, because this way worked for me just fine. So when you do put it on, it actually can, can change. So you can get uh, different kinds of views um, when you're looking at it. Okay, so you can see here, ah, light to dark, light to dark. So, and right now, just so you know, I have this in, in live mode and my ISO is 12,800. So that's why you're actually able to see in my dark basement with an ND filter on is that cranked ISO, um, which does become essential, I found, out in the field using this filter. So I like to photograph my waterfalls with the darkest um, part of the filter to give me the longest possible shutter speed. So if I choose the darkest point right here, right now, because of the environment we're in, I can't actually see anything. So if I was outside, with the darkest portion, it's probably gonna look like something like that. So using a very sturdy tripod, um, which is essential, especially if you're gonna be hanging your camera near like rock cliff edges and stuff, which I sometimes might do stuff like that. So having a really solid uh, tripod is essential. So what I would do is I would throw it into live view mode like this I would have that high ISO on that would allow me to see on the back of the screen. From there, I can set my composition and go, okay, that's exactly, that's exactly the spot I want to be in. I can, then I can tighten that up. Then I can start to do my focus. So you can see in the, I can even see in the back of my screen here. So I'm getting more in focus there. So whatever that works for you, you know, that might be, um, you know, using your back button or a shutter release. Uh, what I found is I usually had my a shutter release attached to the camera because it was far away. And then I could actually use that if I have my, my focus point set up where I want to be putting my focus, which might be right in the main section of where the rocks are, where the water is falling over. I want that nice and sharp. I'll make sure that my focus point is in that area. I can use that shutter speed and depress to lock in that focus. If and when I do that, that's the point then I will flip my lens to manual. That way I'm not going to adjust that focus anymore. It's set. So my focus is set, my lens is set. Now I'm going to take it and I'm gonna take it out of live mode. Then I'm gonna change my ISO. I'm gonna drop that ISO right down to 100. I'm gonna drop my, sh my shutter speed then. I'm gonna slow it right down. So I started off with a two second exposure. So I had to take my f-stop to f-16 to make it properly exposed. And to be honest, it was all kind of a guess. Um, I did try different variances to see which ones I thought were properly exposing and then giving me the results I was looking for. I loved this result. You see the aqua in the water. You see those streaks of white from the water. I love that. That's the image that you see behind me, um, which looks fantastic printed on metal, by the way. So here I've increased by one second. You can see how that white is getting a lot more creamy. It's spreading out a little bit further. Moving into six seconds. Here you start to see the really drastic results and very creamy, very smooth. Um, just a different mood and a different feeling overall. Ultimately, personal preference is gonna determine which way you wanna go with that. Um, if you like the shorter or um, the longer shutter speeds, just having to do some compensation in the f-stops. 
one thing that I also tried was pushing it to the eight second mark and really trying to give that nighttime appearance, which I did in post-processing, which you're going to see here. I really liked this idea. What I would recommend and also because in order for me to get this view, I mean, I had to, I was in a predicament. I couldn't even properly use my camera. I would suggest if you ever do an image like this, take the image above it, put the two of them together in post-processing for a big image. That's the one thing I didn't do. So that's it. Like once everything gets reset, it's, it's focused, it's composed. I always have it then on a, on a timer. I use my shutter release, takes the picture. Uh, it does take a couple minutes to set up each shot, but it's well worth it when you get these results. And I mean, every result was really, really good. Uh, if I did have any um, concerns or issues, sometimes with the filter, depending when you're turning it, if the sky was really light, you would start to see kind of almost like a, a bluish haze that was kind of coming up right up in this part of my frame. So that was a little bit troubling, but you know what? I... Ultimately, I found, you know, if you kind of just adjusted this, you could kind of make that go away or just reposition your camera a little bit for the 35 bucks. I mean, it was it was worth it. Uh, I will definitely try this out in different uh, places and different times when I can. So here's just a quick side by side for that six second versus two seconds. You can really see the contrast in the water. And one thing I didn't mention was as you see the different um, shutter speeds and apertures that I was using, I made those adjustments while also compensating with the darkness of the filter. So if my aperture was dropped to 11 and I increased that shutter speed, I darkened that filter. Okay, so that's all I got. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you have any comments, you know, feel free to let me know. You can uh, see uh, some of these images and more on my website, rockandwars.ca. Hope to see you there. I'll be uh, doing some blogging, telling some of my stories of my African adventures and uh, hopefully some more tutorials coming up in the future. Cheers.